while cancel culture and culture wars are attacks on freedom of speech and the freedom of the press coming from the bottom, from the masses, the virulence of the latest onslaught on freedom of the press and creative expression now comes from the top. States, government structures, public and private companies, oligarchs, as well as other plutocrats are using all the legal tools in the box and more to silence, intimidate and neuter anyone who may as much as mouth a criticism about them, their behavior, their actions and their track records. The creative industries are particularly targeted by these authoritarian top-down approaches and legal tactics to bland their creative outputs and works despite the legal protections offered by copyright. In 2022, post-COVID, there's definitely a global context of seriously curbed free expression and free press. In the midst of a froze caused by the inflation crisis and recession, as well as I just mentioned the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the population around the world, but the creative industries in particular, have seen many of their liberties curtailed, if not obliterated in the last five years. In particular, freedom of speech and uh, freedom of the press have all been extremely impacted by the bullying, scaring, and repressive tactics implemented by old, as well as dying, plutocratic, corrupted, and totalitarian powers, economic entities, structures, regimes, and governments. Indeed, the index index, so that's the name of this index, just twice index, the index index, a new pilot project and global index that uses innovative machine learning techniques to map the free expression landscape across the globe to gain a clearer country by country view of a state of free expression ac across academic, digital and media press freedoms has placed France in the second tier of its new global index of freedom of expression. So in the second tier, it's significantly open country. The United Kingdom in the third tier of its new global index of freedom of expression, category three, partially open. And the United States of America, US, is, the third, is in the third tier too, um, so also a partially open country. And most of the countries in the world are ranked between category four, which is partially narrowed, to category 10, which is closed category. So that's quite worrying. China, Burma, Laos, Turkmenistan, South Sudan, Syria, Belarus, Cuba, and Nicaragua are all ranked in the worst category, category 10. These very concerning rankings were confirmed by other indexes, such as the Reporters Without Borders 2022 World Press Freedom Index, which places France at rank 26, the UK at rank 24, and the USA at rank 42, no less, in relation to freedom of the press of journal and, um, and freedom for journalists. Also, there's the uh, UNESCO's Observatory of Killed Journalists, which is giving some very worrying signs that um, um, it's not a panacea in uh, France, the US and the UK. And also the Economist Democracy Index 2022 has just been released and it ranks France and the UK as just about full democracies at ranks 22 and 18 respectively and places the US as a flawed democracy at rank 30. It's now time to have a look at how legal systems and tactics are used to silence the creative industries via attacks on the freedoms of expression and the press. Very wide, and widening exceptions to freedom of the speech in France and uh, the UK are in place through the statutory legal frameworks. 
So as explained in our 2020 article on cancelled culture, which is an article you can uh, review in our restricted content on our websites, crefavi.com in English and crefavi.fr in French, and uh, the, um, uh, the page is publication. So as explained in our 2020 article on cancel culture, while freedom of speech is enshrined in the French Declaration of Rights of a Human Being and Citizen dated 1789 in its article 11, uh, which provides free communication of thoughts and opinions is one of the most precious rights of a human being. Any citizen may therefore speak, write, print freely, except where he or she has to answer for the abuse of such freedom in specific cases provided by law. So despite this Article 11 in the uh, French Declaration of Rights of a Human uh, Being and Citizen, there are many specific cases where freedom of speech is curtailed uh, under French law. So the statutory limits and exceptions to freedom of speech include the law dated 1881 on the freedom of the press, which while recognizing freedom of speech in all publication formats, provides for four, four criminally reprehensible exceptions, which are insults, defamation and slander, incentivizing the perpetration of criminal offenses if it is followed by acts as well as gross indecency. Another example of this exception to freedom of expression is the law dated 1972 against opinions provoking racial hatred, which like the four above mentioned exception is a criminal offense provided for in the French criminal code. And then the law of uh, 1990 against revisionist opinions, which is also a criminal offense in order to penalize those who contest the materiality and factuality of atrocities committed by the Nazis on minorities during World War II. And also uh, a law dated July 2019 is in place in France against hateful content on internet, which provisions uh, require to remove all terrorist pedopornographic hateful and pornographic content from any website within 24 hours. Um, it was almost completely censored by the French Constitutional Council as a disproportionate infringement to freedom of speech, but it, eventually it entered into force in its uh, expurgated finalized version later in uh, 2019. Since 2020, many more laws have been promulgated in France in order to kill freedom of, of speech and freedom of the press by legitimating the use of artificial intelligence algorithms to collect, gather, and process algorithmically personal data and content to police speech and the media. This total information awareness, so TIA, total information awareness, empowers governments, tech companies, and private surveillance companies into implementing surveillance capitalism enshrined in new laws, such as, for example, the law relating to global security adopted in France in May 2021. Because of this new law, it has now become a crime punishable by five years of prison and a, a 300,000 euros fine to broadcast by any means the face or any other identification element of a member of the French police forces acting within the scope of a police operation. This new law is extremely detrimental to people who live in or go to France, since taking smartphone pictures and videos of French assaulting policemen, which is sadly an occurrence uh, uh, very common in France, and uh, while these assaults are occurring, uh, was the only way to gather evidence of French police violences and acts of harassment. Now it is no longer possible to actually film uh, French police men uh, assaulting citizens, civilians in the street by uh, recording them doing so and taking pictures of snap, snapping pictures of them doing so. Um, so this possibility of obtaining uh, evidence of French police violences and acts of harassment is now gone uh, down, the, it's been flushed down the toilet, so to speak. 
And so this is really worrisome in terms of, uh, uh, you know, even the freedom of going and, and, um, and, uh, and moving around in France because nobody in their right mind in France wants to testify in court um, and or at a police station that they witnessed someone being beaten up by French police forces in the middle of a street or sometimes even in the privacy of their own homes for fear of personal security jeopardy and ongoing acts of vendetta and reprimand by French policemen at their top brass. So since you can't get witness witnesses to actually um, uh, put in writing some 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 witness statements about these what they've w seen with their own eyes in terms of uh, French police uh, uh, acts of violence and harassment. And since now it's impossible, I mean it's very dangerous to take pictures or or, or recording videos of these French police people um, physically assaulting civilians in the street. It means that you can't prove that such assaults have taken place. So it's pretty worrying, to be honest. On the other side of a, chan of a channel in the UK, the legal framework around freedom of speech is no panacea either. Freedom of expression is usually ruled through common law in the UK. However, in 1998, the UK transposed the provisions of the European Convention on Human Rights, with which Article 10 provides for the guarantee of freedom of expression into domestic law by way of its Human Rights Act 1998. So not only is freedom of speech tightly delineated in Article 12, called Freedom of Expression of the Human Rights Act 1998, but there is a broad sweep of exceptions to it under UK common and statutory law. In particular, the following common law and statutory offences narrowly limit freedom of speech in the UK. So threatening, abusing or insulting words or behaviour, intending or likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress or cause a breach of the peace which has been used to prohibit racist speech targeted at individuals. As you can see, this exception is, is drafted in a way which is so wise, it's unbelievable. Um, sending any letter or article which is indecent or grossly offensive with an intent to cause distress or anxiety, which has been used to prohibit speech of a racist or anti-religious nature, as well as some posts on social networks. Uh, governed by the Malicious Communications Act 1998 and the UK Communications Act 2003. Also, incitement, i.e. the encouragement to another person to commit a crime, is an exception to freedom of, uh, of speech. Incitement to racial hatred, incitement to religious hatred, glorifying terrorism. I mean, the list is extremely long, so I'm not going to, you know, you, you can check this list of all the exceptions to the freedom of, spe of, of speech and expression in the UK on our article, uh, Freedom of Speech in the Creative Industries, which has been published on crefv.com slash publication in English or crefv.fr slash publication in French. So, I mean, Yes, all these uh, various exceptions to freedom of speech in the UK do, you know, do seem to make, make sense and are common sense, but they are so wide, so wide and also so widely uh, drafted that they could encompass even um, the tiniest of criticism made to anyone. So lately, the UK government has also introduced in Parliament the Online Safety Bill, which proposes to hand to the UK's communication regulator, Ofcom, the power to identify lawful but harmful, I, I quote here, lawful but harmful content and punish social networks by, that fail to remove it. While these proposals to regulate social media are deemed to be a recipe for censorship by campaigners, the bill passage is following its course in Parliament and is currently at the committee stage in the House of Lords with a view of obtaining royal assent this year in 2023. So there is this sort of, you know, surveillance by the state using um, AI automated uh, in uh, it's intelligence to actually monitor everything which is being said online, but not only as well, because in the UK there are so many CCTV cameras everywhere in the streets, in public places, 
in offices. So even that can be monitored, you know, AI also checking all this, uh, uh, this video footage. Um, it, it is really quite worrying, uh, the, this, uh, this, this, um, and we, I think in, in the next few years, we're going to get even more into this, into this sort of state, the governments, the powers that be, the institutions just uh, go doing even more monitoring, even uh, social media uh, companies and, and networks just doing some really heavy monitoring, and uh, and to the to the point where basically there's hardly any freedom of speech and expression and ability to criticize and constructively obviously um, systems that do no longer work. Another example of this curtailing of freedom of speech is the use of rap lyrics as legal confessions and evidence in court to put away and silence artists. So always imaginative and tactfully, tactically astute, criminal prosecutors and criminal attorneys around the world are using the lyrics and other creative output of artists and musicians as evidence in criminal cases to put them in jail and stop them from expressing any of their ideas and views. I personally really like uh, rap. Not all of it, but I do, and um, especially French rap. This is French rap is almost like the only French music that I listen to. Why? Because French rappers are the only people <laughs> in France, and in particular singers in France, who dare to say the truth, to say it as it is. So I like this sort of frankness and bluntness of the lyrics in, in French rap. And usually when you listen to the latest releases of French rap, you know exactly where this society, where France stands. That is why I really do like quite a lot of French rappers um, and, and their creative output. But um, probably for this reason, that rap is sort of uh, 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 blunt and so, so frank and also, um, because most of the time it's being uh, created by minorities, i.e. Uh, black and brown people. Um, rap is particularly targeted uh, by the, uh, the judiciary to actually put away uh, these, these rappers. So rappers in particular, which whose lyrics are usually punchy, on point political commentaries and um, frank assessments of where respect of civil liberties is at in any society. Remember, Fuck the Police from NWA released in 19, it was a, especially Fuck the Police, this um, um, song released by NWA in 1988 was a very blunt assessment of what was going on in, you know, in terms of civil liberties and respect of civil, civil liberties in the US and in particular for the, the Black the uh, uh, um, black community in uh, in the US. So coming back to my point, um, rappers in particular are viciously targeted by these legal proceedings tactics. For example, in the US, this distorted and twisted use of rap lyrics as legal conventions in court is so widespread that many artists and music companies have signed an open letter entitled Art on Trial Protect Black Art in order to denounce the trend of prosecutors using artist creative expression against them in courtrooms. A bill was signed into law in California and called the Decriminalizing Artistic Expression Act restricting the use of rap lyrics in criminal trials in October 2022. It's just fresh out of the oven. And the New York State Senate is also currently approving a bill um, to limit prosecutors' use of song lyrics and other forms of creative expression. However, New Jersey, the state of New Jersey is also uh, considering passing a, a similar bill, but at the moment, neither New York uh, uh, nor the New Jersey states have, have actually passed these bills into law. Only California has done so, so far. California always at the forefront of uh, legal creativity. And also uh, the Restoring Artistic Protection Act, RAP Act, was introduced in the US Congress in 2022 in order to achieve something similar on a US-wide basis. So this is how critical 
this whole thing as uh, is going and um, um, to the point that legislators around the country are adopting either state law or federal law to stop using rap ly lyrics in court to uh, in indict uh, rappers and condemn them. Uh, in Europe, rappers are also being systematically neutered by using criminal proceedings against them. So in the UK, Music Week reported that the UK rap star Diga D, was, who achieved a number one album in April 2022, faced legal challenges to his career, including a criminal behavior order following criminal convictions and spells in prison. In recent years, UK Drill Music, D R I L L, UK Drill Music, a growing subgenre of UK rap, has increasingly been used uh, in the courtroom as evidence of bad character, with the prosecution engaging police officers, who are notably not drill experts, to decode slang heavy lyrics for the court. In some cases, the video is presented as evidence of gang involvement and violent disposition predate the alleged offense by several years. France and its police forces, who have always had a difficult relationship with the rap genre and their offers, I mean minorities from ethnic backgrounds, and you can check the, the film La Haine, uh, the hatred, la haine, uh, to get a feel of what what it's like in France. The tensions between police and um, and the the minorities, usually black, uh, brown, but also sometimes white minorities for from poor suburbs. Have so coming back to France, uh, yes. So the police forces uh, have always had a difficult relationship with rap, rap Jean and they offers. And they have also clamped down on rap ly lyrics, which may in any way challenge the French establishment and status quo. In particular, in relation to Franco Italo Senegalese rapper Freeze Corleone, who was not only criminally indicted by the very controversial French Minister of the Interior, Gérard Darmanin who was himself under criminal investigation for sexual coercion, harassment and misconduct in 2009, and then again between 2014 and 2017. So Gérard Darmanin, this rather uh, weird uh, French minister of the interior has indicted Fris Corleone, this, this rapper Fris Corleone for provoking racial hatred and racial slander upon the release of Corleone's first album, La Menace Fantôme, but whose songs were unsex unsuccessfully requested to be pulled off from all streaming uh, platforms, such as YouTube, Spotify, Deezer by the French government. So when Corleone, Fris Corleone, uh, released his uh, first album, La Menace Fantôme, I think that was just during COVID, so it was in 2022, because I was actually interviewed by um, France 2 for, on, on this topic, the, the, the um, government TV channel France 2. So immediately there was like an uproar, especially from the Jewish establishment in France saying, ah, it's so anti-Semitic, la di da di da. And so Darmanin, as I said, immediately clamped down on this guy who actually lives in Senegal, so he doesn't give a toss, uh, Fris Corleone, and he actually crimin uh, criminally indicted uh, um, Fris Corleone, as I said, racial hatred, racial slander, and Darmanin, as well as the French government, also said to all the platforms, oh, you must remove, you must remove these, uh, these songs, they are so naughty, they're so bad, la, la, la. And none of the, none of the thank God, streaming uh, uh, services allowed for this to happen. As I said during this interview that I did with France 2, which actually was never <laughs> released, <laughs> surprisingly, I said to them, look, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, you don't like his lyrics, which indeed are triggering, you know, he, 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 calls, uh, uh, he calls women um, uh, pussies or something, yeah, the equivalent of pussies uh, in, in French, which is salop. And he, every, yes, his content is triggering. Yes, he makes some references to Jewish people being um, being uh, very rich in France and, 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 um, and, and so he does. 
but it's all very um how can i say nothing is very clear. In, in his lyrics is just making a few uh, references to 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 this establishment but he doesn't make any overt and express uh, explicit uh, racial uh, hatred lyric l l lyrics or comments so if you don't like it just move on listen to something else but you can't ask for all the streaming platforms to remove the content you that you don't like because you've got some very uh sensitive ears that's not how it works freedom of expression they never broadcast here <laughs> the interview at France 2, the government-owned TV channel. <laughs> so anyway, as a result, Fries Corleon, who surprisingly is still not in prison, probably because he resides in Senegal rather than France, was dropped by his original label, Universal, one of the three majors, and more recently by BMG, uh, which forced him to self-release his third album, uh, Riyad Sejo, um, on, and you can see there's a website actually that he set up, uh, Freeze Corleone and his management, where he self releases this, this third album. W this third album is also streamed on Deezer and uh, Spotify, etc. So, just for the record. Another example of um, uh, attacks on French rappers is the case of a 27 year old stalwart French rapper, Moi La Squale very, very talented French rapper who is currently rotting in prison for breaching his judicial control, the contrôle judiciaire, i.e. the right to stay outside jail pending the occurrence of a criminal court case. So he's basically uh, allowed to stay out, probably with a, an electronic bracelet, uh, but he's on bail, like he's, you know, he's on bail, right? So, um, so yeah, so he was actually put in prison in June 2022 for breaching his, his bail. And while Mohamed Belamed, so this is uh, Moala Squal, is certainly no angel, okay, he, as he was indicted for alleged violences and sexual assault on several of his ex-girlfriends, it is quite obvious that the French government and judiciary are mostly concerned about his rap lyrics and videos, which one can only describe as eulogies to recreational drug use so check out amsterdam yes so basically it's a eulogy to drugs <laughs> soft drugs i must uh, i must uh, uh, clarify but drugs nonetheless and also uh, some of his other songs are eulogies to drug dealing such as for example sadie beat so like um uh, you know cash in cash out Anyway, let's move on now to another att attack on the um, on freedom of uh, the press this time. So these are the slap lawsuits to censor, intimidate, and silence investigative journalists and authors. This is another institutionalized legal tactic to kill freedom of speech and freedom of the press. And these are uh, strategic lawsuits against public participation. So the acronym is SLAP, Strategic Lawsuits Against Public Participation. And they are especially popular and effective in the UK. So very prized by Russian oligarchs and other plutocrats, and we know where this has led, yes, with a conflict in, um, in, in Russia and Ukraine. So it's probably not such a good idea to actually uh, give free reign in f by way of slaps to this kind of uh, of category of a population yeah the russian oligarchs and other plutocrats so slap have and still are routinely lodged by mercenary law firms such as osborne clark mishkan dereya shillings harbottle and lewis cms carter rock and boys Schiller flexner to censor, intimidate, and silence critics by burdening them with the cost of a legal defense until they abandon their criticism or opposition. In a typical slap, the claimant does not normally expect to win the lawsuit. That's not the point. Their goals are accomplished if a defendant succumbs to fear, intimidation, mounting legal costs as or simple exhaustion and abundance the criticism. In some cases, repeated frivolous litigation against the defendant, who is usually an investigative journalist, 
may raise the cost of directors and officers liability insurance for that party, interfering with an organization, i.e. the publishers or journals ability to operate. So a slap is really consequential for the offer, i.e. often the investigative journalist or, or offer and his or her publisher. A slap may also intimidate others, third parties, from participating in the debate because they can see that if you actually open your mouth about a particular topic or a particular person, then you will be sued for dear money. A common feature of slaps is forum shopping, wherein claimants find courts that are more favorable towards the claims to be brought than the court in which the defendant or sometimes the claimants live. The UK is such a jurisdiction. For example, in a 2021 libel action brought against Big Five publisher Harper Collins and the author and journalist Catherine Bolton, Belton, apologies, of the, the latter's book, Putin's People was a slap. Despite good prospects of winning the legal case brought by several Russian oligarchs, including Roman Abramovich, Ms. Belton was left facing legal costs of 1.5 million pounds. I repeat, this investigative journalist was facing legal costs of 1.5 million pounds. What did she do? She settled the claims against her, probably out of court. Her publisher agreed to make edits to the book and a charitable donation after agreeing that some of the information about one of the oligarchs was allegedly incorrect, and I quote here. So the rise of slaps got so bad and stifling on civil liberties in the UK that the Solicitors Regulation Authority, the SRA, launched a crackdown on slaps, saying it's believed that some British lawyers were pursuing abuse lit litigation designed to harass and intimidate their opponents into silence. It set out a list of behaviors that could result in disciplinary measures. The SRA said it would take action if it found lawyers sending threatening letters advancing meritless claims or pursuing litigation that was bound to fail. The SRA has 29 probes underway based on complaints and tip-offs and warned lawyers that, and I quote here, representing your client's interest does not override wider public interest obligations and duties to the courts. A model anti-slap law was drafted by the UK anti-slap coalition, but not much has come of it yet. And like the uh, British law I was mentioning uh, before, which gives the ability to um, basically uh, uh, the online safety bill, which is swimmingly going through all the stages of, uh, in order to obtain royal assent this year. Well, this anti-slap bill has not had uh, uh, this, this kind of success <laughs> in this Tory government. Of course, as one would expect, the US has had a flurry of cases which are notable slaps. Even French courts are routinely seeing slaps in their dockets. For example, in 2010 and 2011, Mathias Pujol-Rost, a French blogger, was summoned twice by the communication company Cometic, Nova SEO, over exposing the quick selling method and suggesting a financial compensation for his first trial. The company's case was dismissed twice but appealed both times. And on 31st of March, 2011, the company won in court the censorship of any reference of its name on Mathias Pujol-Rost online blog, as well as quite heavy damages that uh, Mathias Pujol-Rost had to pay for to them. And the obligation to publish the judicial decision for three months on uh, Mr. Pujol-Rost blog. So, interestingly enough, now Pujol Rost is uh, a um, a uh, freelance journalist for the kind of punchy French publication called Mediapart, Media Part, Mediapart, and so he freelances for them uh, about these topics of, of of slaps. And otherwise, if you look at his LinkedIn profile of Mathias Pujol Post, it says long-term unemployed person. <laughs> I think the guy is completely you know, dis, 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 
disgusted by the whole system. So it just it just touches the door and yeah, doesn't seem to be doing much else. So um, aside from his collaboration with uh, with Mediapart now. So slaps are becoming so concerning that the European Commission from the European Union has drafted a proposed directive to tackle abusive lawsuits against journalists and human rights defenders. It enables judges to swiftly dismiss manifestly unfounded lawsuits against journalists and human rights defenders, as well as establishing several procedural safeguards and remedies, such as compensation for damages and dissuasive penalties for launching abusive lawsuits. So we'll see where this proposal of uh, EU directive goes and whether the European Commission manages to have it passed. I think it would be excellent, excellent um, if it became law at some point in the near future. Although, as I'm sure you know, it's not going to affect the UK because the UK has brexited from the EU, but at least it will impact uh, the France, uh, which frankly, the last five or six years has really, really uh, suffered from massive curbs and curtailing of uh, freedom of speech and freedom of press. So the short-term outlook is really troubling as far as protecting freedom of speech and creative expression are concerned. Only decisive technological, legal enforcement and political action from the people and their future representatives may reverse the course of these extremely worrying trends of annihilating freedoms of expression and of the press coming from both the top and the bottom. The top is all these laws and um, judiciary proceed proceedings, which uh, uh, muzzle everyone. And the bottom tactics are um, the culture wars and uh, cancel culture. Let's watch the space and see. I suspect though, that the next few years will see violent riots guerrillas and civil wars erupt as the people grabs back power and reclaims agency, as well as its civil liberties, the hard way, because obsolete structures, corrupt governments, the patriarchy, and rotten individuals and companies refuse to let go and relinquish their autocratic power and plutocratic control. So that's it for me this week, and I shall catch up with you very soon. Bye. Thank you for listening to Chris Furvey's live webinar. Bye-bye for now.